Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a game to share with you from 1958 on the white end, Milko Babatsov, and he's playing against Mikhail Tall. There was one main takeaway for me from this one. It comes out of the middle game of this King's Indian defense. Zamish variation. Okay, it's on this move six where Tall puts pressure on the weakest square in White's camp, d4 as a whole. Additional defense of that. Knight d7, queen d2, pop quiz. How would you react as black here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Best move is the move played in the game, a6. Now, I want to draw attention to this moment in the game because I think many players would go astray. And by astray, I mean release the tension in this case. Why would you maybe want to do this? Well, the queen knight has a couple new squares. At the same time, note how you would be helping the king knight. This is a perfect square, perfect outpost. Also, the bishop now has, finally, legal moves, probably to e2, in white's moment away, moments away from completing development, castling on the king side. Same side's castle position. It is best to maintain the tension. Note, one of the deficiencies with the Zamish variation is that the kingside minor pieces are stepping on one another's toes. For as long as you maintain the tension as black, you are in a way keeping a question mark over the head of the king knight. It's asking itself, do I go to g3? Do I go to c1? Note, if you're going to f4, that would be losing as white, because now you could take on d4 and follow up with the fork. My point here is that if you're giving this knight the d4 square, this post is far preferable to g3 or c1. If you really do want to release the tension on d4, it's best to consider it more closely only after this knight has already moved from e2. I didn't point this out yet. a6 is not just some waiting move. It is paving the way for Benko Gambit style play. b5 is right around the corner. Pitching a pawn in many lines is a way to play this. You do get the open lines on the queen side. Play follows with queen side castles. A case of opposite sides castles in this game is present. If, well, first of all, this is not most common nowadays. Rook to d1 is more common with an eye on a same side's castle's position. Now, a way that the structure could change at this point after a6 is with d5. I want to give you a feel for how you could position your pieces, and I want to show you this b5 move in action, give you an idea of how you can be following up. You can start with knight to e5. Something has to be done about c4. Let's say the knight moves to allow this defense. You could already play b5. And after takes, it's already gambit play. Don't take straight away. The bishop would be able to recapture in one move and develop. Best to bring this knight into the mix with an eye on c4, as well as an f5 break. Black already has the king tucked away. There's still a couple tempi needed by white to have the king tucked away. In general, as black, therefore, we should be welcome to creating pawn tension everywhere. And soon, both sides of the board are going to be lit up. A lot of open lines right around the corner here. It's a way to go. Just wanted to give you a feel a few moves down the road in the event of d5. In this game, opposite sides castles position followed up with queen a5, king b1 very standard to watch over a2 as well as set up another common move that you would also see against the uh, Sicilian dragon. That's sort of a, that's what we kind of have by transposition. A, a Sicilian dragon here. B5 on board, and now knight to d5. So, 
this right here is the middle game takeaway for me from this game. How to react to White's last move. I should point out that this move is considered best. I'm not going to share any lines. If you want to experiment on your own, feel free to do that. Move played in the game is a move I think you could see plenty of players go with. What's happening here? Queen is hit. Pawn is hit. How do you deal with that? What do you think Tall's move is in this position? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Move played in the game is... Knight takes knight. Tall, rarely does he have a, uh, a retreat in him. <laughs> He's giving up the queen for two minor pieces. One of the points with king to b1, I should note, is that when you play knight d5, now if you take queen takes queen, it is not with check. So in, in this position, queen takes queen would be a losing move for black because white could go with the in-betweener. Knight takes pawn check, and only then scoop up the queen. This is a decisive advantage for white. Okay, well, there is no queen takes queen here. It's knight takes knight, queen takes queen. This is a sound sacrifice. Black is for choice here. Also, after knight takes bishop, that wasn't just any bishop that was won. That was maybe the four-point bishop. That was the better bishop. The one that ties in better with the central structure, which is primarily on light. Okay, the smoke has not yet cleared. This knight hitting the rook and c4. Knight takes c4. And this knight is just too good on this post. It's much more valuable. It's not your ordinary three-point knight, so it is worth about a rook maybe four and a half points, so it's knocked out straight away. If you're trying to work around it, um, I don't know, queen to e1, now you have to deal with this passed pawn. This knight is still alive and maybe reinforced one way or the other. Okay, rook takes, knight follows, pawn takes, and knight to c1. So the imbalance here, we have an unopposed dark square bishop and a rook versus a queen, basically. And since it's opposite sides castles, there's no fear. Um, there's a lot of fear for the white king, but not the black king. This guy here is way too good a defender for white to even uh, think of starting up some attack. It's just not happening. So this is very, very one-sided type position in going for this sequence going for this imbalance. Um, considered best is knight to f4 instead of this uh, knight c3 move, but it's a very, very difficult task ahead for Team White, no matter how you look at it. It's just a very important ID to be familiar with, giving up the queen for the two minor pieces. Let's see how all of the black pieces soon swarm the white king. Rook b8. Bishop c4, knight b6, and then bishop d2. These last two moves are interchangeable. And what are we doing about the pressure on b4? It's just way, way too much. This last move throws the game away. It's completely lost from this point on. Considered the best attempt for white is to bring this knight back to e2 to try and stop the bishop and rook from observing b2 directly. Planting the knight on c3, in other words. Okay, that's not played. Instead, queen d2. Bishop gets out of the way, which allows this guy to advance. Knight e2 now, but by this point, it's too late. c4 hits. Bishop is kicked from defending c4. c3 hits. Not only hitting the queen, but this knight eyeing up the c4 square. So... No good solution here for white. What is tried is queen d3. If you're taking this, that's going to hurt. b2 is collapsing and so is white's game. So queen keeps the knight out of that monster square. Now there's a passed pawn. 
What's tried here is knight d4. Cuts out the bishop from seeing a couple squares, c3, b2, but here come the other pieces. Bishop watches over the knight moves, c6 primarily, and the final piece is ready to enter the attack. Rook d1, rook f to c8, and bishop to b3. Uh, from here, knight a4. How do we get to that c3 square? Well, I'm sorry, should you allow the knight to get to c3? No. That's going to be absolutely devastating, so the knight is knocked out. There aren't any tries. I, I tested out this position right here. I was like, could white actually get a little crazy and take this pawn, allow a discovery? That is just not going to end well. So in this position, it was rook to d1. If white is trying to knock out the pawn, here are a few ways white could get hurt. Knight a4 is double check. If you go to the corner, there's rook b4, taking advantage of the pinned knight. King a3, there's knight b2, hitting the queen. Once more with an eye in the c4 square. That's not going to end well. If you go here, you drop the knight. If you go here, that's not only mate, but a pretty fork to end as well. Got that square covered. Anything more? Queen there, you're just asking for this one. Knight c4 around the corner. One final variation is this one here. King c1, don't forget, this guy could go to this diagonal as well, which paves the way for another fork. What a guy. <laughs> that knight. Always landing a fork. However you slice it. Okay. From here, it is rook to d1. That pawn is definitely poison. Rook fc8. Bishop b3. Knight a4. Knight has to go. Cannot allow it to get there. If you try to defend with knight e2, in comes bishop b5. Knock out the knight. Hop into c3. No saves here for white. So game finishes up like this, bishop a4, rook is hit. If you go here, you're getting mated. If you go here, we can knock out the knight, and then mate on c2. Okay, knight b3 in the game. As soon as the knight is out of the bishop's way, we have that intersection square. Hops right to it. Queen takes a, bishop takes knight. They are stacked on the c file. Nothing nothing to do about rook c1. Certainly can't take the pawn here. We'd have discovered check, and the queen would be falling next. So what is played is queen a3, rook c1, rook takes, rook takes, and white resigns. It's checkmate next move in three ways. The king went here. Well, that's the only move. After king there, we have mate like this. Like this. Or, if the game actually did play out to mate, I think Tal would go with that one for mate. <laughs> a rare under-promotion to a bishop for mate is what we could have had if it went straight to mate in this game. But he resigned instead of playing king to a2. Interesting game. This one here, again, the main takeaway was the two minor pieces for the queen imbalance. It's perfectly sound. Black is certainly for choice in that imbalanced uh, position, in that imbalanced middle game slash end game. So let's have a look at the tail of the tape with this one. You can see that it is clean right here. After b5, it doesn't like the idea to ju jump in there with knight to d5. It's considering d takes d takes c instead, but after hopping in, it does in fact like the idea to take on d5, give up the queen, and yeah, get the two minor pieces. Knight takes bishop on e3 next, and that's a very big bishop, that dark square bishop. In the end, we have... Handful inaccuracies, mistakes, blunders there. This is really the main one. That first inaccuracy. Knight d5, not the way to go, and it was downhill from there. 88 inaccuracy. Uh, 88 accuracy, I should say, for white. 
and Tall playing at 95% accuracy. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it, and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.